A couple of years ago, we met Outback Joe. He desperately needed a drink of water to save his life and drones came to the rescue. Well, now our flying friends are back. Just outside Dolby in Queensland, the world's toughest drone competition is about to kick off. Ten teams are competing for the $50,000 grand prize, and this year the challenge is much more complicated. Their drones must take off, locate Joe, land, collect a blood sample for his doctor to analyse, and return safely to base. All autonomously, all in under an hour. Our reporter on the ground is Nick Quick. And here he is, Joe, the man himself, standing tall. And he's supposed to be standing because he's meant to be someone capable of placing a blood sample into a drone and arming it for takeoff. Because he's standing, he's that much more difficult to see from up there. And that's just one of the many complex aspects of this treacherous challenge. The big difference between this challenge and other drone challenges around the world is the great distances involved. So the teams are flying about 23 kilometres to get to this site. Um, it's then very challenging because it's a very cluttered environment. We've deliberately put Joe in an area where the ground's pretty rough. There are very big trees around, there's farm buildings. Um, so that makes it extremely difficult. And then they've got to fly another 23 kilometres to get back. To be in with a fighting chance, teams have come up with all shapes and sizes of winged warriors. So, as the race begins, let's cross to Nick. First up is Canadian couple Forward Robotics, who hope to fly to victory with their custom drone duo. Seems to be drifting away. But their hope is short-lived, as one of their drones comes tumbling down. OK, so from this point on, it's about returning the base. So it's in the truck and off to track down the wayward plane for a manual landing. We are going to waypoint number four, where we're going to recover our one aircraft. This year, teams are allowed to enter not only one, but a secondary communications relay aircraft too. Great for maintaining a data signal back to base, but the rules stipulate that if one goes down, the other must return directly home. With the circulating plane safely landed, the judges call an auxiliary aerial support to locate the crashed aircraft. Uh, we're just going to have a bit of a look, see if we can have a view from above. Um, yeah, it's in a nice big green field, so sort of have an eye in the sky, going to give it a bit of a help. It's hard to tell like what would be significant and what wouldn't, you know. But even from the sky, the drone was impossible to spot. Back at base, Thai team Isaac Lab prep their custom chopper for takeoff. And it soon blasts off for Joe. Using a video games controller, the team scans the screen for possible sightings of Joe. Yeah, 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 found him, found him. On the left. They found Joe, but then disaster strikes. Smoke. Smoke. It's coming down. We found Joe, but yeah, we're trying to like get the precise question of him, but yeah, there's more coming out first and then it's crashed. One of the differences between this challenge and other drone challenges, this is incredibly realistic. We've chosen a, a place where it really does flood. We've chosen a realistic farm. Uh, we've chosen a totally realistic terrain and uh, there, are, there are tall trees, there's uneven ground and the distances are about the same sort of distances that you would get between a cutoff area and a flood and the town. So it's the realism we're after here and getting teams to develop the technology so they can actually solve the problem in the real world. And being cut off from healthcare is a real world problem. The drone tech developed here could one day be life saving. As part of the challenge, teams have also had to invent novel blood-carrying compartments with detailed instructions on how to use them. You can just slide it in and there's a click mechanism inside. Now they say necessity is the mother of invention, well for these guys that meant creating this beauty. Hail the Delftacopter. 
This can take off and land vertically, but upon reaching altitude, this bad boy transforms and can propel itself forward like a plane. Its specially designed rotor can continuously control pitch during the transition. The team also built custom autopilot software and took things to a whole new level, using an elevated platform to get the signal up and above the crowd. Its special downward-facing 200-degree cameras mean that when flying horizontally, it can still see the ground, and having two of them gives depth perception too. Like an invincible phoenix, their fixed wing flew, and then... Terminate. Okay, the judges at the far end are saying, terminate, please, you're in a tree. Ah, the Australian gum tree. They get everywhere. Uh, they set the parameter for 20 metres high, uh, but the tree was 22 metres high. So, you need luck, a little bit more. Bad luck then for Mavlab, and the losing streak only worsened. It's back to Nick for more on the grounds and in the air reportage. With so many crashes, a storm is brewing. It really is such a difficult task, with so many criteria to be met, that even a little wind can make all the difference between success or catastrophic failure. So what of reigning champions Canberra UAV? They won the last challenge and they've returned with a souped up version of their fixed wing plane Felix. They've added vertical takeoff and landing with eight independent props, ensuring it stays airborne if one of them blows. And a chopper to beam signal back to base. Team captain Andrew Tridgell developed the VTOL autopilot software that most of the teams are using, mentoring the many keen for an upper hand. The search pattern is actually a complex butterfly mm -hmm. type pattern, cloverleaf with like you know, five petals. Um, and that's how we approach Joe from every angle to remove the systematic errors in the position estimation. And he's off! On board, Tridge has developed a special Joe detection system, which analyses photos for any unusual objects. These are then highlighted to him, and Tridge does a visual study on each. But he's soon feeling the heat. Uh, no moving the track, please. I need the uh, the shade. We have got Joe. Yes, they've got him. Bail on board. It's now a race against time to get back. Touchdown! Mission complete. In the end, Canberra's chopper didn't return home, but a winner is still announced. Of course, is Canberra UAV. So, Everyone that got the aircraft flying was was a winner in this competition. It was a tough challenge, and um, you know we, we didn't finish the mission. Um, but as a team, I think we did very well, and I think all the teams that got here did very well. This event has been just absolutely amazing. So thank you so much. It's a great achievement, but there's still clearly a lot of work to do before drones can autonomously perform such complicated tasks. So. What will the next drone challenge hold? <laughs>